my name's Kelly, I'm a CBT therapist and psychologist and today I want to talk about relationships and communication. So as a therapist and as a psychologist I work with people in relationships whether that are couples or whether that is parents and children or any other sort of type of relationships and one of the things that I often find that couples find difficult or people in relationships find difficult is communication. So I wanted to give some tips about how you can communicate better and more effectively with someone you may have difficulty communicating with. So one of the things I always explain is when you are talking to someone, listen to understand and not to respond. Often when we're listening to people, we're constantly thinking about what they're going to say next. What can I say next? How can I kind of continue this conversation? But really what we should be listening is just to understand what is that person saying? Why is it important that they're telling me that? And that's sometimes how arguments can occur because we're constantly jumping over. We're, we're trying to be heard. We're trying to say our point and it's just kind of just noise really at the end of the day. So when someone is talking to you, just listen. And a really, really great exercise that I get when I work with couples, a lot of them to do, is the two minute exercise. So you both get two minutes to talk, one after the other. You do this over a course of a week or a couple of weeks, and you alternate who goes first. And within that, first of all, you just start talking about neutral things, such as kind of how your day's been. And so when you've got the talker over here, the listener is just listening. The kind of just listening back, using active listening skills. So you're like, mm-hmm, okay. Well, what is what was that like? And just sometimes reflecting back on what they've said or asking questions about what they've said. And if you're able to do this about neutral things, you can eventually move it on to more difficult topics. So things that frustrate you about the other person, difficulties that you're having, but again, still using the two minutes. And you may be so if that person's talking about did I understand that right? Is that what you mean? So thinking about using your active listening skills to be able to help you to communicate better with the other person. And when we're kind of thinking about um, the communication, often we think that people can read our minds. They know what we want, either if we've been with them for so long or they know us really well, but the majority of people can't read minds. So tell people what you need or what you want from them. It could be simply like, I need a hug or I need some space right now. Just let them know and let the other person be able to tell you the same and both respect each other's needs and wishes. Obviously there's going to be some caveats to that, but if you don't tell someone what you need and what you want from them, how are they going to know? And within this, one of the other things I often see is that Sometimes people just want to vent. But when you care about someone, sometimes you want to problem solve for them. So maybe when you're expressing something to your partner or the person that you're closest with that you're trying to communicate better with, tell them that I either want to vent or I want to problem solve. This is going to iron out any sort of miscommunication that the other person goes into a problem solving mode where you just want to be heard. You don't want to solve the problem right now. You just want to be heard. Or if someone wants to kind of solve the problem, but the other person is just listening and not saying anything. So being able to say, do I want to vent or do I want to problem solve is really, really key. Another thing is relying on the other person to make you happy. Now, obviously you can have great times together, but their happiness ultimately isn't your responsibility. So you need to kind of ensure that you're making yourself happy for you. Yes, you can do things together, but ensuring your own happiness and your own well-being is paramount. And within saying that is making time for each other to kind of make each other happy or to do things together. Scheduling dates, whether it's a date night a week or a date night a month and sticking to it, honouring that, respecting your, your partner or your friend or your parent or whoever it is, making that time for them. And when you do make that time for them, you can practice the kind of the listening and responding skills. So you can practice the venting and the problem solving. And you can make 
different memories with each other, taking yourself potentially out of an environment which often causes arguments, potentially if that's in the home or in the workplace, changing the environment often changes the topic of the conversation. So being able to, to make time for each other, I think is also really key. So they're just a snapshot of some skills which I think are really help, helpful for people in all different types of relationships to help to communicate better. So I hope you found them helpful. I've got lots of other videos on my YouTube, so please check them out. If you'd like to, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.